Glaber, you've joined a very exclusive club today because you are making your third appearance on R2C2. We don't ask everybody yeah. back a third time, and not everybody <laughs> says yes. So I feel like we must have something good going on, me, you, and C. Yeah, always, always. That's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you you being here, Glaber. I, you know, when we talk about a baseball season, it's so long that a lot of times it's hard to know what's real, what's not, what's actually an issue, what isn't when it comes to a team and evaluating a team, especially early on. Is there a point in the season where you start looking around the standings and saying, oh, okay, that feels real, that doesn't, or whoop, we need to kick it into gear? Is there a moment through this marathon where it starts to click in for you, where you where you start to take real notice of the standings? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the first half, I think, as a player, and just try to be a little more mature and get all the experience. But uh, I feel like after the All-Star break, that is the moment, like, and just start around, like, okay, that is the potential uh, World Series team. Mm -hmm. Because on the beginning, uh, unfortunately, we got many injuries, uh, back and forth, pitchers get injury every time. I mean, we we never be consistency in those situations. But uh, I think, like, after the break, uh, everybody's back, second half. I mean, every every other guy is set off the team, and I feel like that is the way we can we can see each other to compete in the postseason. I wanted to ask about coming into the season a, a different role for you now. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, fourth year in the league, and you know, you got all these guys coming up, whether it's Peraza or Cabrera or Volpe. Um, how has your role changed in the clubhouse now? You know, you being like the veteran guy with all these young guys coming up. How <laughs> Yeah, on the beginning, that's weird because the first couple of days in the spring, I saw Wolpe, Peraza, also Cabrera. Uh, they look me like as a player. I played like 10 years in the big league and I just <laughs> feel like weird. Yeah. And I just I just leave to the WBC when I'm, co I'm combat. Uh, I saw Wolpe doing really good things. And, and you know, when, when you had in those situations, you... As a player, you don't want to say something to to feel uncomfortable to the the younger guy, right? Mm -hmm. So basic, basically, we we walk in and just waiting during the season. I remember we are in Baltimore, and he was a little bit struggle, and I don't know for some reason, Robbie put uh, close to me in the locker, and I'm just telling like, "Hey, boy, uh, I feel in the same way, like." First couple of games, the big league for sure. You want to rock and roll, and the things don't go in the same way. But I just, just be patient, just, just do your thing, and and believe each other. Like everybody here, I uh, believe you. You, you show what you can do in the spring. So here in the season, nothing different. Just, just stay really good at bat and believe you, believe in yourself, and you know. In in some point of the season, you you will be feel comfortable and you start rocking 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 really good the ball. And after that, I, I believe he he feel comfortable. Uh, with Peraza and Cabrera, I, I always get conversation, WhatsApp, text. Like I I go with with, with those guys to dinner so many times and just try to to show confidence. Like you show me. And and Andujar the first couple of years when we when we come to the to the team and on the beginning we feel like okay we are on the big list Yankees but are you always telling everybody like hey give Glaber and Andujar confidence and that is the way they can play better on the team they don't have that that type of pressure to show something and, and get so hard so uh, that is the way I just try to. To be the same with we will pick Cabrera and also Peraza. It is it's a it's interesting, Glaber, how much that role has shifted because you're still only twenty six, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean that what's funny about it is you have like there are a lot of guys who they make their you know, who are who are considered big prospects who might not major make their major league debuts till they're twenty four, twenty five. 
26, mm-hmm. right? And here you are, and you've been here for a while now. How about for you personally, when it comes to preparing for the season, going through the season, what's the biggest difference between 26-year-old Glaber and, let's say, 22-year-old Glaber? Uh, I feel that prepare. Uh, it's weird, but when I was 21, 22, uh, the body feels so good. And now sometimes you don't feel like as a well because many games, uh, how I prepare myself now is a little bit different than the 22. Uh, but uh, I'm, just, I'm just so many. I see many history uh, in honor of the the guys I try to to follow in that way is Cristiano and also LeBron James because how those guys prepare himself to play on that type of level is still we how 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 is LeBron 38 39 39 and yeah. Cristiano is like 37 38 too and they just just feel like 22 is just like inspired so basically during the offseason, I prepare myself like as as well to prepare. Uh, like I was 22, I got my personal trainer, and we got too many conversations. Like I wanna play, uh, I don't know, 36, 38. But uh, when I get that old, I just wanna keep play as well when I was younger, right? So, and just just try to to prepare myself really well uh eat really well uh i don't eat many mcdonald's and many uh, street <laughs> food time on the past because i know everything is changed a little bit but uh you know i just just try to learn about the other people about other experience and, and just try to be be consistency in in those type of moments and and be and be healthy that, that is the way if you prepare really well uh, during the off season, you know you can you can be healthy all season long. By the way, LeBron turns thirty nine in December. Just so we okay, don't okay, age okay, him quicker. Okay. No, no, no. Just so we don't <laughs> age him quicker. But go ahead, see. I was about to say, what about prepping for the game each day? Because I know the lineup changes all the time. Sometimes you're playing second. Sometimes you could be DHing. Like, what about each day? Like game. Like, how do you go into the day? Do you do you prepare like you play second base every day, or is it different if you're DHing? Yeah, the, this year on the beginning, I get many conversations with with Booney, and I I tell myself like because Booney from the beginning he he gives me that confidence like uh, that confidence time. On a day I can I can go to his office and and tell each other like we're respectful for sure, but uh, he always give us that confidence to to be le- believe in him to to be a friend i mean he's a manager he's a boss but uh, as a as a friend too so on the beginning of spring i tell him like, hey Bonnie, you know uh, i don't feel confidence the age because that's the way i feel like i don't do anything because when i play defensively for example i'm just moving around mm. uh take rounders uh, I run for a East fly ball, you know, and just feel like activate in the moment. In the age, I just be in the dugout. Uh, sometimes I go to the cage, do many swings. When I, I go to the home play, I feel tired. Uh, I just worry about like get ready for any spring because I don't want to get injured in some some point. And and he always has the 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 perfect answer. So basically, he always tell me like, hey. That is the type of opportunity because we got many, many, many people in the infield. And the ace is another opportunity. You are you being the line out and you don't get any day off, you know? So get a get a conversation with uh with with Stanton because he got more experience than the ace. So basically on the beginning of the year, literally opening day, I was the ace. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, uh, before the game, I'm just as a stand, like, how should you prepare? Like, uh, are you working out during the game? Are you going to the case many times? How you prepare? And he tell me some tips. And just basically that day, I'm just working out a little bit before the game. Like I never do, but I'm just working out on myself. And just watch the game, you know, hype 
first day, I was really excited and back to the case. And just exactly that day, I get a new routine. So I don't do too much in the case because that means when you hit too much, when you back to the to hit, you feel tired, shoulders tired, you know, many swing. So basically, I, I, I do the same prepare time on my normal day, but I do it in the in the each inning and just do like five, six swing in the case and just back to to the go to to try to prepare really well. That's really interesting. And do you feel comfortable when you do it now, Glaber? Yeah, I mean. Uh, and you see uh, opportunity to to rest and also keep playing, you know, the age. Mm-hmm. And uh, being that I know every day that, that is the most important. I prefer 100% play the age than get a, a off day, you know. So uh, I think baseball every day is just learn about something new and it's just be prepared and mature many things. So now is another point of my career to figure out those DAs keep hitting good. Because mm-hmm. in the beginning, I just like, oh, I'm the age. Maybe I don't hit really well because in the past when I was the age, I don't, that day I go all for four, for example. So mentality wise, it's just like, okay, are you in the lineup? That is the way you help your team to the day. And just figure out the way how how I can get more consistency the age and get get really good at bat. Glaber, how about now that you are done with shortstop and you're at second base? When you look back on the toll that shortstop took on you, or if it did, do you think that it made it harder for you to succeed offensively dealing with the? change to shortstop and the responsibility of that position? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, I really like short. I mean, I, yeah. I sign professional wish how I play shortstop. I play many minor league game in short. But uh, big leagues is, is other world, you know. It's mm-hmm. our animal. And on the beginning, I remember I played second because Didi was played short. In the 19, Didi get TJ. And in some point during the season, I play many, many games in short, and I play good. But mentality-wise, it's just like I'm at second base. I just play short for now because mm-hmm. I know it is coming back and try to do the best, but I'm, I'm, I'm second. So in the 2020, before Kobe, uh, Booney tell me, like, are you going to be the short every day? I'm just okay. Uh Kobe year is a history I don't want to talk again. But at 21, <laughs> that is the, the experience. So 21, like many people know, uh, I know, okay, I'm back to short. So I have to prepare myself to play short. I, I have to lose weight because I have to get more range, for example, be a little bit faster. And those kind of things ch- change my prepare. So I get a little bit more skinny. Uh, I feel like I lose a little bit power because uh, I remember that year I don't I don't get many work like I normally do. So I just try to get more spring. I go to the beach with my with my trainer. We do many agilities, you know, and just prepare my body to play short. So basically, I remember spring training. I play really well. I don't make error, errors, anything. But during the season, for some reason, I don't play it short. And I don't get it. I, just, I feel really frustration because how I prepare myself and the things never going the same the same way. So I make errors. I don't hit really well because I was more focused in defense than the hitting. And also, I lose power. So mm-hmm. I hit night homer. And on the beginning, I'm just like, okay, that's going to be interesting because I don't feel myself like normal I feel. So during the season, I'm trying to work it out really well. I start eating a little bit more, like McDonald's, something to to get more power to 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 see if if I can get more, more homers, but nothing works. So that year was experience for sure, 
but uh, I learned many things about myself because uh, I know how I can be to get myself really good to hit for power, for example. So I feel so good to back to second for sure. Uh, confidence wise, back, and also I'm I'm focused a little bit more to hit like like normal. That is an outstanding answer, Glaber, and that's such interesting perspective on that entire experience. I know our audience is going to appreciate that. And and the thing is, you're an outstanding defender at second too. I mean, yeah. you you are definitely a a plus plus defender over at second base. How about the chemistry you've developed thus far with Anthony Volpe at shortstop. How has that felt thus far with you at second and, and Anthony at short? It, it's feel good. Uh, it's it's just amazing, like how how he prepared himself, and and we we got many many conversations during innings or during the game to to figure out feel more confident because. Uh, for the WBC, we don't play many games each other. So, so now we we just try to 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 be brothers and and and, and do the little things for for their for their for their good way. Uh, as as a, for for now, we play really good. Uh, we got our many conversation. Uh, uh, I try during the game when we face each team. And just try to get little things like, hey, maybe you don't know that hitter, but uh, he's pulled a little bit more than the normal. So move around, believe me, and be there, uh, because we we got a, a we got Chappy, and Chappy move around the infield, uh, all the report, all the guy, all the things. But uh, some points on the game, uh, you have to throw. Uh, yourself to who you face or who is your pitcher. So in those those things and just tell him Bopila, hey, just come here, believe me, you got the third base, I got you. Just move move to the gap, you know, those little things and just try to to share with him to to get more confidence and and, and just try to make all the offs possible. I feel like you like the perfect mentor for him because he come up with all this hype and you know all this, this fanfare behind him. It was the same thing for you. 22 years old, coming up, like expected to make a huge impact on our team. So I feel yeah. like you're like the perfect mentor to have, you know, in the middle infield with them. So it's great to hear that you guys have like developing this great relationship because the only person that can kind of shepherd him and, and mentor him is you because you were literally in his shoes four years ago, five years ago. Yeah, and also also Rizzo, George, uh, all the guys try to to share like confidence with him because as a player is it's really hard you coming to the new team you are the rookie and the first couple of days you all for eight and you go to your room after the game so basically we got in couple opportunities we got dinner together and we bring Bobby or we go to a resource room and you know call Bobby you know those 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 little things uh, as a player, you feel confident. You feel like, okay, that's my family, you know? Like, I don't go to my room, just think about too much, like, oh, I don't do this, I don't do that. No, I'm just going to their research room mm -hmm. uh, with Josh, he's all the boys. We don't talking about baseball in the moment. Just we play video games, we we order food, you know, those, those kind of moments, I think, as a player, you feel better and better. And you get more confidence to to be prepared to the next day because you know your family don't worry about you awful for no your family worry about you feel good where you at right now yeah, yeah. that's true glaber how about as you guys struggle early in this season uh you know when the yankees struggle people panic and <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you you know that um i know you guys have had quite a few Significant injuries, obviously, to the offense, Stanton and Judge now. Um, and then pitching-wise, not having Rodon, not having Seve yet. Some of the arms in the bullpen with J-Lo and then 
Tommy and uh, who knows if we'll ever ever see Lou Trevino again. That sounds questionable, but I know you've had some injuries, but is there at this point any panic, any worry, any concern? How are you guys dealing with the early season struggles? Uh, We fine. Uh, The the bad thing is just uh, injuries is is happened many times in our career, you know, yeah. since 18 is no new for us. Uh, I mean, we, we, we pass a bad moment right now. I get it. We, we don't have the, 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 the stronger line. Not like we show, we show we do and we start the opening day, but, uh, things happen, you know, things happen. Uh, injuries happen many games and, and, the good thing right now, we, we believe each other. Uh, we try to figure out how we can pass this moment. And in rock and roll, I think it is what it is. We have the the good guy try to to figure out the way can help the team. And you know, if if those guys and myself stay healthy and and try to to hold those moments to wait for all the the injury guys back to the line now we we will find i mean it's just one month of the season right now it's i think four or five months still so we got plenty of time to figure out the way to to get better and 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 just the guys that play right now stay healthy and and waiting for 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 all the guys come back you know what's crazy, Roko, is that like when shit seems like it, everything's on fire in the clubhouse, it's, it, that's when it's the most calm. Because we, yeah. like, you know, as a Yankee, you're the only one that can change it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. we know that, like, we can go out and play better. We know that we can fix these little things and turn yeah. everything around. I always felt like when we were playing good, like at the beginning part of last year, that's when I got nervous. When I'm like, man, shit's rolling too well. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> if it ain't no adversity or shit happening. <laughs> Like it ain't normal. We're always used to fucking. It's Yankee. It's the Yankees. Like we're used yeah, to. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the more the shit is crazy on the outside, is way more calm on the inside. I get nervous when we yeah. start playing too well, and I'm like, well, we need to save that shit for October. That's that. I mean, yeah. But this type and of stuff that's happening right now is normal. This this is this I, always happened. That 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 sound weird, but it's normal for us. I remember nineteen when you when you hear everybody got injured. Everybody. Like, Oh, I I believe the forty man roster thirty a got injury. I I I was the, I think I was we only we Gardner we we don't got injury all year. No. <laughs> uh, I think it's normal for us. Uh, it's better happen right now than September. Yeah. And and you know the the good the, the good thing is just like nobody feels sorry for us. Everybody come to us and try to beat the Yankees and just. Just the player have the the answer to to figure out how how we can win, but uh, the good the good thing about about all all, all those bad moments we we stay together, uh, we know we we coming back strong and we maybe start tonight, but uh, yeah we get we we should be fine right now. Uh, I know I know all the guys when when coming back from the injury is gonna be interesting right now, but. Uh, uh, what we have right now is is the Yankees, and and, and I know we we what we did. Glaber, with you specifically, one of the things I talked to you about uh, in the clubhouse the other day, which you've talked about some early this season, is just not chasing as much. And you know, one of the things that I thought was interesting when you first came up, that because we just hadn't seen you before, is you very clearly had a two strike swing, a two strike approach, right? Like yep. you where you literally wouldn't do your leg kick mm-hmm. and, yep. uh, and you would still have results and you still hit for power. Um, but also were able to hit for average. And then maybe last cu- last year you started to chase a little less production came back, but mm-hmm. this year, even more so it seems like you really dialed into staying in the strike zone. How, yeah. how, how, how have you kind of regained that approach or, or, or what brought you to that place where it became such a focus? 
Yeah, uh, I mean, many conversations with the hitting coach, many meetings about my shade, how, my, how about a strikeout, all the, those little things. But uh, this year, for sure, mentality-wise, just I want to hit 30 homer, 100% 30 homer. But uh, I don't want to strike out many times because it's Luger, a strike out many times, and it's normal. But uh, personal things, I don't want to strike out as much like the last couple of years. Mm. So mechanical-wise, is nothing changed. It's just believe a little bit more on myself. So I remember Marlon Abreu mm-hmm. uh, many yeah, years. Like, Spanish English translator for those who don't know. Yeah, uh, I remember in the 18, 19, when I, I think it's the 18, I swung everything like two, two, three, two. I swung everything because younger guy, rookie. If, for example, I face CC, you know, three thousand strikeout, and I just come into the league. Three, two, close pitch, for sure, the umpire strike me out because it's easy. Berlander, Renke, whatever guy, you know what I mean? Mm. So Marlon, for some reason, one day he told me, like, Gleyber, I don't know much about hitting. You come into the big leagues, you know your team, but uh, you have to take pitches. And I'm just like, what you mean, Marlon? <laughs> so, <laughs> like, what you mean? He said, like, just... Three, two, right? So you take one pitch. Maybe call a strikeout, but maybe you get, you get walk. So that means your strike zone on yourself, the entire lead, the umpire lead knows like if that guy don't swing that pitch, maybe it's a walk, you know? It's mm. ball. So I know you're still young, but you can do because you got the ability to to take pitches. I'm just like, uh, I don't know, Marlon, but I thank you. <laughs> On the beginning, right? Uh, and this year, I'm just like, I, I tell him, Marlon, Marlon, you remember when you told me I just started doing? Like, I feel confidence. I see the ball really well. But uh, what right now on the game, the new game, is huge because you can go all for three, but you get one walk, it's like you get all for one, uh, or three for one, you know what I mean? Mm. Like walk, OPS. So basically, I start of the season, when it's freezing, New York is freezing, Detroit, Cleveland, those, those type of cities, it's just like, you're sure you swing, and just try to get more barrel or get your piece you can do. If they throw you nasty slider, like Sony Grain throwing right now, It's hard to hit because that that piece is starting in the middle and finish on the dugout and you swung and you miss. So just make sure you put yourself in good position. And if you don't take or you don't like your pitch, don't swing. So that is the way right now it's my approach. I go to the home play, just pick a couple pitches. But sometimes I just go out, out of take. Like I believe my I believe myself, he don't gonna throw me fast or right in the middle and I just take the piece and for some reason I start taking walk. So myself I start feel co- feel confidence and confidence and and you see the ball really well and and now I'm just just the way like three two if they don't throw me anything and just pass the baton to the guy behind me, you know? Mm-hmm. Because so many times as a player you wanna do damage. Like three two men and first, men and second, bases lower you wanna hit. But uh, sometimes they throw you shape it and you strike out for no reason. Just, just believe the guy is going to be behind you and pass the baton. You got to walk and the guy can do the job for you. You know, you know who, who was like that, who, start, who did that as a, as a young player was Guardy. Mm. Guardy as a young player would not swing at anything that mm-hmm. he didn't think was a strike. So for like three years, close pitches, he'd come back to the back. He's like, man, that shit was this far off. Swing the fucking bat. Like, they're going to call you out. You know what I'm saying? We see yeah. him. But he, w- he would not. He was so disciplined. And by the time he was five, six years in, he was getting those pitches because they knew that he knew the strike zone. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, that shit works, in it, and it works psychologically to the umpires. Like, if they know that you know the um, that you know the zone, you're more likely to get those pitches on and off the plate. It, you know what I mean? Just because of your reputation. Yeah, like Josh Stanton. 
those guys six seven and every time when they throw sinker down they on the beginning i remember they call many right to judge yeah. but a judge judge never say something to the fire right we jail them from the logo like that piece is down and now for some reason umpires figure out the way like those pieces really down so he take those pieces because those pieces are don't don't be close to us right so i think uh that is the way um, intense marlon because he told me those the, the <laughs> many years ago and i just just figured out this year and uh for now is is what you know it's just like let's see let's see what happens i I love that Marlon has a role in this story because Marlon's <laughs> yeah. I love Marlon. For those yeah. who uh, are listening and, you know, some inside Yankee uh, talk, Marlon Abreu is he's the Spanish English translator, also a member of the PR staff. He's been there a long time now. He's like the kindest dude ever. But and he's with us every day. He's a part of the team. He's a part so, of the team. Yeah, he's yes, a part of he's the team. There. Yeah. He's he, I mean, yeah. shoot, he'll warm up guys on the field. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because the other day he said something to me too because we were we were just talking about um, guys who maybe had some success when they were young and then struggled and now we're hopping onto other teams trying to find it. And I was like, it's so crazy that like you saw the talent right away and and then they struggle. And he was like, you know, one thing that's become so clear to me is this league is about adjustments. He said, because mm -hmm. it's not just the pitchers getting to know you. It's every team has so many people that they have hired in the front office and the coaching staff, the liaisons between the two on, you know, in the actual uniforms playing as well. And their whole job is to figure out how to get opponents out. Right. And yep. so like they're they're calling through data and they're figuring out like, oh, Glaber can be exposed on this pitch. Oh, what and and so if you don't make adjustments back, then they they're gonna get you out more, right? And it's so yeah, interesting that, that part of the, the equation. That that is uh Marlon always told me like you have to do the adjustment every pitch. He he's the guy he always tell me like almost every day because uh, on the beginning of the season, I start really hard, but uh, for some reason, I just start hit really hard, but uh, to the shore, right. to the right field, everything's just out. And he always tell me, like, hey, just go a little bit far from the home plate. Just change. Don't, don't change anything about your approach. Just change the position you hit. Maybe you go a little bit close to the home plate that contact go a little bit far to the right field or maybe on the hole, you know? Those kind of things he always told me, like, you have to do the adjustment because if you keep, for example, he land right to the shore, you're going frustration, you're going crazy. So maybe you go a little bit back, that's going to be blooper, mm -hmm. but uh, that's going to hit, you know? So he, for us, Marlon is not just a translator. No, Marlon is part of our mentality. Why? Because he always see the game as a pitcher and also as a hitter because he helped many Latin players, Latin pitchers. But uh, basically, he saw all the reports. He saw how you can be better, you know? And mm -hmm. in so many, so many opportunities, he, he told you a couple of tips. And in, in some point, it's going to be heavy. I've never even thought about that, but he's in every meeting. He's in every hitter's yeah. meeting. He's in every mm -hmm. pitcher's meeting before the game. Like me and Gary's meeting before games. He was in every one of those meetings. I never thought about it that way, but he's in, I mean, he's he's yeah. the analytic guy because he's in every meeting. He's right there. Yeah, he he, he, know, he knows he knows much about, about the game, the new rules, the new everything, because – He's on the game right now. He's he to me. He's, he's not just a translator. He helped many in many ways. The players like people. People don't release that. Mm. That is really cool stuff. I love Marlin's getting his shine here. This is oh, yeah. well, well deserved for Marlin Glaber. Yeah. How about the guy who got the bowl haircut? For those who uh, who don't know, um, there was a fan. I believe his name was Jacob. <laughs> 
who tweeted mm-hmm. at Glaber if he hit a home run, he'd get a bowl cut. Well, Glaber yeah. hit a home run. Then Jacob tried to back out of it. <laughs> And Glaber t- <laughs> tweeted at him. was like, no, no, no. You said you got to do it. He did it. Yeah. Did you see the that, bowl cut? And what did you think? Yeah, he he, he sent me a picture. Uh, that's, I think that's happened for one reason. I never, ever saw DMs, right? Social media after the game. Yeah. But uh, that day, I don't know why. I got many friends. Many people share the video. Mm-hmm. And you check it out. And I saw that tweet, like, if you hit a homer and just get, get a haircut. And I just, <laughs> just for good for good way, and just respond bad. But I, I don't think he's he going to do it, right? Yeah. So the next day, I saw everybody tweet that, and just like, okay. And many people uh, send pictures like the, the movie with, uh, with a haircut. I don't know the name. The com- comedy of the movie. Who is it, see? A bowl cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I just released like, oh, he's gonna do it, and what's fun? <laughs> I mean, that that is the the good way about fans. Like when you struggle, they going hard for on, on yourself. Mm-hmm. That's no no taboo for anybody. Like we know we live, and that is New York. It is what it is. But in a good way, when you doing the good things, you know, fans support yourself. And those, those, the, those little things uh, I really enjoy because it's something like maybe you, you, you get really good things for the fans. Mm. Now, I, w- I want to ask you one more off the field question about what it feels like to be a dad now. I mean, I, you know, you came up and <laughs> you were so young. We spent a lot of time together, but now it's almost like watching my little brother have kids, you know what I mean? Like watching yeah, you grow yeah. up in the big leagues and now you having a kid, how has that changed everything for you? It's amazing. Uh, I mean, Ethan is the uh, another part of the, my motivation. Uh, my dad always told me like, I, like, I get it, all for four, you get it mad. And we know the wife get hard. Like, because when you pitch and you get five homers and you go home, you don't want to talk about with nobody, right? <laughs> yeah. But when you saw your son change, things change really quick. So my dad always told me like, I know Elizabeth, my wife, don't don't be hard with, with, with her. And all for four, all for 20. And she always told me like, hey, don't worry, you got it. I say, no, I don't got it. I all for four. <laughs> I all for 20. I don't got it. I, <laughs> You know, I'm playing so bad. I don't hear. I, 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 maybe I forget how I hit. You know, those many things people know, but otherwise, you know, she, the ladies always stay, stay back, you know. Yeah. But uh, all for four, I go home and I saw my boy just like, okay, I got it, you know. Those, I think it's peace. It's mm-hmm. just like, see, I just wake up really. Like he he literally go to bed like eight p.m. He never come to the night games. He just coming on the weekend night games, mm-hmm. but uh, he got a really good routine. He go to bed eight p.m. He's asleep all night, but uh, he wake up at seven. So basically, my wife wake up, go to the living room, play with him. But uh, for some reason, he go to my room and wake me up every day. <laughs> So 7.30, I'm just w- awake and play a little with him. And those moments is, is just, just amazing. And just like my day start really earlier, but uh, uh, it's really grateful. I mean, it can give me pace, give me motivation. And and it's, it's really nice to be at that right now. How old is Ethan now, Glaber? Uh, he's a year in... Two months right now. Nice. It's it's, see, it's fun for me because so many of the guys in the clubhouse, Glaber included, we all we all have kids now around the same ages. So like, it's funny. I I feel like more interested in talking to Glaber about being a dad or DJ or Garrett or you know when Mm -hmm. Chad Green was there last year. I feel like my daughter is around like is within a year of all your guys kids and yeah. the, it, there is something and, and all the parents who are listening to this know 
there's something that bonds you to other parents once you're in that club. Like you just, yeah, you just right. feel like, right? Like, oh, I know what you're going through, or or I know what it's like balancing mm-hmm. that responsibility. And and Glaber, some yeah. and see, you were part of this too for for us who travel a lot for work as well. You know, and the pressure that it puts on mm-hmm. our our wives as well, who are, you know, with yeah. the kids. Shoot, see, you having four of them. Like, yeah, no, I mean, for sure. I mean, it, I mean, that's why I, a, a big reason why I retired was to be able to be home and be with the family. And you feel like you start when I started feeling like I was missing out on like home life. It was time for me to retire with baseball. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I started feeling like I, I need to be on a vacation with them or I need to be at this school event. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, they kind of just take over your life. And, Did that? And they, this is a dad question for, for me then. It'll help me and Glaber. Do you feel that? Is there like a certain age or a time in school where you feel that more than the younger years? When they get like, like with little C, it was like sixth grade. Like when okay. he was like 12 and the all stars and shit, you want to be there for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so like about like when he was about in the sixth grade that I, I started feeling like, damn, I need to be home, mm. you know? Yeah. yeah, and and also times fly, and just yes, and just go on the road for six, seven days, and my wife sent me a video like he started doing like little things like faster, and for for reward and and everything, you always miss those type of moments. Yeah. So yeah. when you back, he knows many things like, for example, uh, he 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 speak a little bit. He say many words, but uh, for one reason, my wife understand everything what he do and what he want. <laughs> and I tell her like, what he want? Yeah, and yeah. He, like, mm. and just, I don't, I don't know what he want. And I tell her, like my wife like, what he want? And she tell me, oh, he want play with you and in the bed and just like how you know. So you know, <laughs> those, type, those type of moments. <sighs> and, I mean, we we for sure for all or war we. We we miss those moments, but uh, but it's amazing. And just and just try to enjoy. For that reason, I wake up really earlier. Like I don't care, I'm tired, but uh, I just wanna wanna see what what he do in the morning because maybe in three four years he's getting bigger and he he don't wanna do anything like that. Yeah, and that's why I, I'm I'm always forever grateful to Joe Girardi because he was he he allowed us to bring our kids into the stadium all the time. Like little C was there all the time. The girls came in on the weekends, like Carter was in there all the time. So that kind of bridged the gap of not seeing him so much. Where like if we came back off a road trip, I can take little C in with me to the park. Like yesterday, yeah. I brought him in all day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. today too. So uh those type of those type of things, you know, helped a lot. So I'm forever grateful for Girardi for us, you know, being able to have our families around in the clubhouse. Yeah, that's amazing. Labor, you are the best. Thank you for giving us all this time, man. I uh, send you good vibes for uh, things to turn around with the team quickly and y'all to get healthier. Yeah, thank and you. Continued success and keep enjoying fatherhood, man. Yeah, sure. Appreciate it. Appreciate it for having me here. Appreciate you guys. Thank Thanks, Glaber. Thank you. Thank you, Sissy. Take care.